Hi, my name is Nico, and today with a little bit of help from my friends over at Expert Voice and Kershaw Knives, I'm gonna be showing you my quick maintenance routine for my everyday carry knife. Now, a knife is a pretty big part of my everyday carry, and it's something that I have in my pocket almost 24 seven, whether I'm at work on the fire engine, I'm doing volunteer technical rescue, I'm out fishing, or just around the house working on a couple projects. Knives are incredibly important to uh, just getting things done in my world. Without any further ado, Let's take a quick look at this Kershaw leak and we'll tear it down and show you guys that basic maintenance routine. Before I jump into everything, I like to do a little bit of safety measure here since I am a little bit clumsy with my knife. Now that I have the blade all covered and safe, I'm gonna go and make sure that I have the right size bits in my drivers. If you do not have the right size bits, absolutely do not go ahead with this disassembly procedure. Torx bits are extremely finicky and they will strip if you have an undersized bit. On the same note, if you don't have any Torx bits and only hex wrenches, do not try to make those work in these Torx head screws. They will strip pretty much immediately. You're gonna be better off putting everything aside and getting a set of Torx bits. You'll thank me later when you don't have to send your knife in for warranty. As I remove all these screws, I like to lay them out on the mat in the order in which I took them out. It's especially important on more complicated knives that use different size screws, and especially ones like this Kershaw Leak that have a little bit more complex of a mechanism. If I do have a little bit more complex of a knife, I will pause at certain points and take pictures of all the more complex parts and pieces, especially all the ones that matter which direction they go back into the handle. That just makes something that I can reference to later, especially if I find myself in a bind and things are not coming together very nicely. At this point, we pretty much have the whole knife apart and it's time to start cleaning things out. For that central pivot hole, I find that a Q-tip works fantastic. If you do have a knife that has a pivot that you can remove, I like to remove that as well. For parts and pieces that have a little bit heavier grease or contamination that's really caked on, I find that a little drop of isopropyl alcohol on my paper towel really helps dissolve that and clean it up just a little bit faster. With all these little nooks and crannies that like to hold onto grease, I find that a little bit of a pointy object such as a toothpick or a bamboo skewer works very well to get things out of the way. And then I'll finish things up by doing a last pass with that rubbing alcohol just to dissolve that heavy grease. And onto the other pieces here. Another surface that I like to really clean out and focus on is the locking surface right here. I also like to give that little ball detent a little wipe to make sure it's nice and clear of any built up crud. Finally, we get to our little washers. These things are absolutely microscopically thin, so be very, very careful when you're cleaning these guys. If you are exuberant when you're cleaning them, you can bend them, and that's, again, a bad day. <laughs> So I like to just put them on a flat part of the paper towel and wipe them with a little bit of light pressure from the pad of my thumb. I'll flip it over and this one is good to go. So the first step of reassembly I like to start off with is getting the pivot back and assembled completely. I'll start off with the socket side of this pivot. It's just gonna be a lot easier to tack it from this side. Once I've got that in, I'm gonna put a tiny little drop of oil on that center pivot, again, less is more in this circumstance. I'm gonna take the appropriately sized washer and before I lay it down, I'm just gonna put a tiny little drop of oil on the handle scale. On most knives, you'll have one shiny side and one dull side if you have a metal washer. I like to put the dull side down to the handle. Then I will take my blade here. I will sit that in place. And I'll put another tiny little drop on the blade side of that contact point. Take my other washer, put it shiny side to the blade. I'm gonna put one last little drop here on that washer, avoiding putting any inside that central pivot hole. And then I will take this opportunity to lube that detent ball with that slightly higher viscosity oil there as it's perfectly exposed. I'll wipe away any excess amounts of oil there. So now that we have that blade side, I'm gonna look back at this other side handle. This is where these screws heads sit in, so it's gonna be a little bit easier to start off with this side. Again, I've got my little piece of tape here acting as my spare hand as I put things back together. 
So I've managed to put that spacer back on. I've got this torsion bar loose and free floating, which is what I want. And I think I'm at a point where this tape is going to have to go or else it's going to get in the way of putting this back together. This procedure is a little bit finicky, so I'm just going to take it nice and slow and make sure that I don't drop any pieces. On this Kershaw leak, it's very, very important that we sit that torsion bar into the hole in the blade and then rotate it into place with that pivot screw or else it's not going to function properly. I'm just going to make sure that everything is sitting nice and neat. Looks like those screws are in place. Another little trick I like to do with these screws, since they do have such tiny little delicate threads, is before I even start screwing it in, I like to start by reversing that screw out until I feel it jump just a little bit as it's going in those threads, and then I'll start screwing it in. That just helps prevent any sort of cross-threading and again, damaging those threads. And if you do need to put any sort of amount of force on the screw as it's going in, stop, back it out again, and try again just to make sure it's perfectly aligned. Now for that last little pivot screw, I'm gonna do the same thing. Put it down in the socket, back screw until it just jumps a little bit and start to screw that down. There we have it. All the handle screws have been tightened down. They should be well and set and shouldn't be moving anytime soon. When I open and close this, I've got just a little bit too much drag, so it's a little bit too tight. Generally speaking, I'm gonna start off by loosening up quite a bit. You can see here, if I wiggle it back and forth, I've got quite a bit of play in that blade, wiggling it back and forth. I'm gonna come back and incrementally tighten this blade just a little bit at a time until that side to side wiggle goes away completely. So there's zero wiggle side to side. I'm gonna make sure I see that it fires appropriately. It opens and closes nice and neat. And then I'm just gonna double check that that blade is nice and centered, which it looks like. So there we have it. The pivot has been completely tuned and it is firing perfectly nice and smooth. There is no more side to side play. I like to take this one opportunity to just double check that my pocket clip screws are nice and tight. Your knife should be good to go for another session of some hard use and if you did things correctly and everything's all nice and aligned perfectly your knife should be as good if not better than it came from the factory so there we have it that is my entire everyday carry knife cleaning procedure it's something that i do fairly frequently and something that really helps my tool last that much longer and just operate at the best level possible. With that being said, I'd like to thank my friends over at Kershaw Knives and Expert Voice for making this whole video possible. My name is Nico, and if you want to see more of my videos, you can check me out on YouTube at Chinook Outdoors. I always like to close my videos by saying thank you for watching, and as always, stay safe out there.